Welcome everybody to our Rucksack Global Poetry Patchwork event on call of World Poetry Movement. Our tribute to Jack Hirschman, who left us last August at the age of 87. Let me explain to the ones who don't know Jack uh, who he was. He was a great poet, wrote more than 100 volumes of poetry and essays. And he was a social complexity that characterizes his poets. In the 70s, he was a popular innovative professor at the University of California, Los Angeles. Here you can see a picture of him of those days. But he was fired for his anti-war activities. It was a time of the Vietnam War and he promoted students which were supposed to be enrolled for the war with the maximum votes and honors to prevent them from leaving for Vietnam. Among these students, there were also famous Jim Morrison and other DOOR members. So although uh, Jack was a friend of many beat generation poets, he differed politically from them. He called their ideas a bourgeois revolution, uh, not an avant-garde. The real avant-garde is the one capable of fighting against injustice and is close to the needs of the poor in the world. This is the responsibility of true poets. He preferred the suburbs, the squares, social centers, schools, prisons, to the literary salons. In 2009, together with Sarah Minifi, Bobby Coleman and Kathleen William, he founded the Revolutionary Poet Brigade, an international organization that is now present in various cities. And he was a member of the Union of Street Poets, a group that distributed leaflets and poems to the people in the streets, just back to the roots, the real activism. He was also instrumental in the formation of the Union of Left Writers of San Francisco. So between word and action, in fact, he never marked any distance. And in the search for what he called the truth of to be. So this uh, idea of this reading was to read poems which were inspired by Jack Hirschman and his ideas or poems we dedicate to him. I think this is a good way to remember this great artist showing that he, the seeds of his ideas and his poetry we continue growing in other people's mind. Following his calling to welcome to planetariat, a word he had coined, the planetariat is the word consciousness despite division and borders. It's the multitude, the people uh, who make the world go round day by day, which is one single people, more connected than ever nowadays. This means that the life of the planet is in our collective hands. So I'm quite proud that in this reading, we have three generations. We have the close friends to Jack. Then we have the second generation, like me. I didn't know him personally. In fact, he was born the same day my father was born, just one year earlier. So I feel like a second generation. But then we have the third generation of young Indian poets today. And this is very nice because this means really the voice of this poet is going really far. And in India, there are going on lots of things and lots of social activities with poetry. It's a very, very interesting terrain. So unluckily, we don't have Agneta Falk Hirschmann with us. She had uh, her, a friend of her died in these days. And so she couldn't come. She had to go to the commemoration. 
here we have a nice photo of her with Jack at the wedding. Uh, she stayed a long time with Jack, and I hope we'll have her another time with us. Time with us. So now we will start with Gabriel Franco from Colombia. He was a friend of Hirschman, of Jack, and he is the national coordinator of the World Poetry Movement. He is also the co-founder and general coordinator of the Medellin Festival and part of the editors of the magazine Prometeo. So, bienvenido, Franco, Gabriel, Franco. Las palabras es a ti. Eh, Luz Stella traducirá. Gracias. Eh, gracias, Angie. Eh... Y gracias por la invitación, me siento, es un, es un honor un poco que me pone algo nervioso. Porque quiero y quise mucho a Jack, pero no fui un amigo de él de toda la vida, fue alguien que descubrí eh, en el Festival Internacional de Poesía de Medellín. Ah, gracias. Eh, el micrófono. El micrófono. Eh, Luz gracias Angie. Eh, Y gracias por la invitación, me siento, es un, es un honor un poco que me pone algo nervioso, porque quiero y quise mucho a Jack, pero no fui un amigo de él de toda la vida, fue alguien que descubrí eh, en el Festival Internacional de Poesía de Medellín. Uh, he said thank you, Angie, uh, has, is, thank you for the invitation, it's an honor to be here. He has been a friend of Jack all his life, and he met him in the poetry... Uh, Festival of Poetry of Medellín. Sí. Entonces, me he sentado a conversar con Jack eh, en estos años, desde que vino la primera vez al festival, seis, siete veces, ocho, diez, después en conversaciones virtuales, con ocasión de que él fue parte también de, de los fundadores del Movimiento Poético Mundial, que se estuvo en Medellín en el año 2011. Bueno, well, he said that... Um... He talked to Jack, he sit to, to have really nice conversations with Jack for 10, uh, eight times that he went in, uh, that Jack went to Medellin to the festival. And even after that, virtually, he has talked a lot of times with Jack of a lot of things. And uh, he, Jack uh, was one of the co-founders of the, uh, uh, World Poetry. Called? Well, yeah, World Poetry mo mo Movement. That uh, began in Medellin in one of the festival in 2000, 2011, did you say? Yes. 2011. Mm, el asunto es que eh, con ya bastaron minutos para saber que no me enfrentaba eh, con un intelectual, sino con un hombre en toda la dimensión de la palabra. Era, además de ser un intelectual, era profundamente humano, hondamente humano. Uh, he said that just. Uh, it was uh, just uh, he need few minutes talking to Jack to realize that he was uh, a very a man in the whole mm. extension of the world. He says that he was very deeply human, a human being. Yeah. Y en, en las conversaciones eh, que, que tuve con él, siempre tuve la impresión de que su adhesión a la izquierda revolucionaria nunca fue una adhesión ideológica sino una adhesión hondamente humana. He always has the impression that this um, ad, um, adhesion, or como se dice, como this love of Jack for, for the uh, left, like uh, revolutionary left, politically, it was not an ideological adhesion, but most like a human adhesion, something deeply human. Era un hombre de una gran inteligencia, pero sobre todo un hombre de un gran corazón. Y tanto la inteligencia como el corazón tenían un diálogo permanente que hacen que sea el hombre que todavía es. He said that uh, he was a, a man of a great intelligence, but also of a big heart. And the, that the permanent dialogue between the, that intelligence and the heart make him uh, the great human beings that he still is. En mi opinión, el corazón humano estaba por encima De, de cualquier circunstancia en él y el corazón humano necesita justicia igualdad etcétera y seguido siempre o, 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 o mucha parte de su de su actividad y de su y de su vida siguió por, por el amor las ideas existían por supuesto 
pero fue el amor el que definió sus grandes decisiones en la vida. Es, esa es mi impresión por lo poco, pero hondamente que lo conocí. You think that uh, uh, the Jack's heart was big and his decision and his his main, uh, way of being was uh, dictated by the heart, by love. Love was always his his uh, path, and that uh, that's the impression that he has from the few occasions that he met him. But deeply um, think that he met him. And uh, okay, that, that's it. Okay, voy a leer entonces. Pensando, yo, yo no había dedicado nunca a poemas a Jack, pero mirando quién era Jack y quién soy yo y cómo nos relacionamos, eh, terminé por dedicarle los poemas que yo le dediqué al sufrimiento de mi país. Ok, that, uh, he never had uh, write poems to Jack before, but uh, he's going to dedicate these poems to Jack, knowing him, knowing Jack, how the way he was, uh, he want to dedicate these poems that he wrote for the suffering of his country. Sé que estos poemas no van a ser eh, interpretados hoy, entonces va a ser una lectura seguida. No va a leer el poema completo, van a ser tres poemas de, ese, de un cuerpo de diez poemas. So he's going to read three poems. Uh, <coughs> we're not going to translate the poems right now because, well, translating poetry is kind of make it that, that way. So he's just going to read these three poems that are part of a ten uh, body poems. El, el título del poema es La Tierra de la Sal, y voy a pedirte, Luz Estela, que traduzcas el título, solo el título, y está la dedicado a, a, a Jack. Dijiste La Tierra del Azar? De la Sal, Sal. De la Sal, ok. The, the poem, he wanna be, the, the, the title of the poem be translated is The Land of the Salt. Voy a leer entonces estos eh, tres poemas. La Tierra de la Sal, para Jack Hitchman. Desde la sed te hablo. Desde un país sin alas te hablo de avideces, con palabras que vienen del cansancio descendiendo suciamente a la derrota, al descreimiento, a tanta soledad. Como alguien que ha abandonado su frágil calor entre los inmensos osarios de sangre sobre las aguas aceitosas y quietas, desoladas pero un corazón de niño busca aún las orillas espumantes, las blancas arenas de un territorio sin orillas. Vivir es un país que tú amarás. No hay un país para ti aún, bajo este sol que rebrillan los osarios, ni tras las lluvias que deshojan las viviendas suburbanas. Fundar un país, fundar la voz, desde tu sueño maltrecho, armarlo de las veredas marronientes. Buscar es nuestro territorio, ardernos en la pregunta. Es la sed nuestro coto de casa, el odio que edifica, la sed, la pregunta, la sed bebemos. Saciarnos de sed en nuestro territorio, para que aguas más limpias bajen hacia las manos de los hijos, de tus hijos. Vivir es un país que tú amarás. No hay todavía. Y quizás no habrá un país para tal. El texto que sigue es sobre el exilio, sobre la gente que tuvo, tuvo que abandonar el país. Eh, eso va a pedirte a los Estela que lo, que lo, que lo, que lo traduzcas. Son do, es un texto sobre la gente que la violencia del país obligó a abandonar el, el barco en el que estábamos, que era un barco que regresaba a Naufragar. Te pido, los Estela, que hagas esa claridad antes de leer el poema. Uh, he wanted to, uh, we need, he want me to tell you that these poems that he's going to read is about exile, uh, how the violence in the country make uh, them abandon the boat that was uh, ready to sink. Ok. Entonces, he soñado ciudades distantes, otras calles, otras voces, otros aromas. Las cartas en las que otro mundo se describe sin sangre. Países con una muerte generosa de un viento limpio, limpio invadiendo las instancias. He, he soñado países completos y he querido irme, huir, hundirme en la amnesia. Pero jamás podré marcharme sin mí, sin aquello que en mi corazón habita para siempre. El eco de los niños muertos, cielos en salmuera, osarios de mangle y la dolorosa memoria de visitas oscuras ahora sin entrevistas. 
rostros que ya no duele más y mi espantosa oscilación entre la esperanza y la desesperanza. Jamás huiré si voy conmigo, pues para nosotros toda nave ha sido mítica y nuestro país, al que llamamos nuestro, ajeno. Para nosotros toda nave ha sido mítica, casi exilio toda vida. Y tampoco tú podrás marchar si te vas contigo. Cada paso te hablará fieramente de la huida y una memoria de soles tropicales te cegará bajo cielos extranjeros. No hay un sitio en el mundo para quien ha visto que su más íntimo sueño no era su sueño, que no nos era dado soñar sin sueños altos, ni nos, ha, ni, ni nos era dada la espera y que todo aplazamiento demoraba sueños posteriores. Ni hay espacio posible para quien, hay, para quien una vez entró al erial del desencanto. También tú viste, tú supiste de la infatigable cadena de masacres. Viste caer las flores núbiles en medio del espanto, la niña muerta, las promesas aplazadas, la madre loca, el vencimiento, el milagro roto. ¿Qué tierra cogerá tu mirada? ¿Qué dirás a quién? ¿Qué? ¿Con qué lengua? ¿Con qué palabras dirás? Estoy allí en mi país y es verdad y debéis creer. ¿Qué verbo usarás para tanta desolación? Un gesto te bastaba aquí para que te hubieras escuchado en una dolorosa complicidad. Muchas gracias. No, gracias, gracias, Gabriel. Gracias por este hermosísimo poema. Eh, ahorita, ahora, now we go uh, to Betty Gilmore. Uh, she is born in Oklahoma, grew up in Los Angeles, and lived a bit all over the world until she arrived in Italy and settled down. And she is a blues singer, a poet, and um, she's a well-known poet of the Milanese underground scene. Uh, she's part of our collective Poetry is My Passion, which organizes activities with the international artists, the immigrants in Milan. So, Betty, the word to you. Thank you. Okay. Um, I just uh, miss Jack Hirschman. I went to UCLA and I left about six months after he was there and I'm so sorry. <laughs> But um, this is a short poem and then Angie said I could write, read a poem of Jack's, which I really uh, like. Um, and I want to explain, I had a trouble because I think about the translations. And so in the United States, uh, they use a voting system for grades. Uh, you get A, B, C, D. And for example, in Italy, it's 10, etc. So the poem is just a short poem. Uh, an A plus for Jack. You deserve an A plus Jack for being the best student in the classroom and out on the streets where you helped so many people save their lives and their consciences too, like great men and great poets know how to do that's it <laughs> and um the poem by jack i i really like because it's a combination you maybe you all know it <clears throat> it's a poem called nelly after his shouts the straps her screams the thrown things, the door slam, the bitter weeping. Out of the thin box, as the delicate paper was parted, she'd lift the sheer mojute stockings and run her fingertips along them, slowly smiling, girlishly again. She'd begin singing a Perry Como song. She loved Perry Como and would sing the same song he sang all day long on the make-believe ballroom time. Then, in a black bazier strapped to her freckled shoulders, she'd sit on the bed, fit the stockings, stand up, and notch them to the garters, 
that hung down from her black girdle. A ripple of fat ran round her waist, squeezed out by the girdle, different from the pumps that swelled that is out. Squeezed. I beg your pardon? That's, that swelled out from her bazier, and I saw a blue bruise, the shadow of a belt buckle on her thigh. But she was singing again, and over the girdle she put on a pair of pink bloomers, and over everything then a brown and white flower print summer golden dress. Her white heels had holes in the toes where her nail polish showed through. The bottle of polish, tweezers, lipstick, rouge, brush, and emery board were on the vanity table over there looking in the mirror. Her lips swam in the Como song with rose red strokes, reaching the end with shiny glow like the waxy cameo of her mother on the brooch in the drawer. She'd hold out her hand and say, come darling. We'd walk hand in hand up and down our street in the twilight and the neighbors would cry out, hi Nellie, or hello Mrs. Hirschman, and hi Jackie, my how you've grown. That's the poem. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. For this wonderful interpretation. <laughs> very, very good. Okay, now we go to India, to Mamta Saga. She's from Bengaluru. She is a translator from her native language, Canada, and she is a co-curator of our Rucksack project. She brought 18 poets from India with 15 different languages into the project. She is also a curator of lots of festivals of art and literature, and she's the promoter of Kavya Sanya Trust, an online poetry event. So, uh, uh, 50 people languages connect. And Mamta will make present because she from two poems from Jack. Thank you, Auntie. Um, uh, yes, I think I should uh, begin. There is a problem with Auntie's. Uh, You're good. Uh, You're good, Mom. Internet, good. right? Go ahead. Yes. Go ahead. Thank you, Don. You can you can focus on me now. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, yes, when Auntie asked me to. Um, participate in this. I, uh, I, I had read a few of Jack's poems. I knew that he's one of the very important poets. Don, can you just pin me? You're, you're good. You're good, Mamta. Go ahead. You're highlighted okay. so everyone can yeah, see. Yeah, thank you. you. Yeah, thank you. Um, so as I started reading Jack, you know, uh, I just got lost in reading him and rather than writing a poem for him. You know, I started writing a poem for him later and I could not complete it. But you know, I loved some of his poems and I started translating them. So today I would like to uh, read two short poems of Jack, um, which I have translated as well. The first one is um, uh, an excerpt from one finger from seasons, Jack Hirschman. I wanted a death that was simple, weightless, a profound, rose thighs gathered round in darkness. You give me this endless ways, a garden of your mouth, and still I count sick, ounce by ounce, my pollen, conscious of the little veins exploding on your eyelids. Dying a lonely man, one finger from the seasons. Sleep, my lovely feather. You call my chest the sun. The difference is a matter of stone. Now I would like to read the Kannada version of this. Vasantagala Berelani, okay. 
ಸಾವು ಬೇಕಿತ್ತು ನನಗೆ ಸಾಮಾನ್ಯದ್ದು ಹಗುರವಾದ್ದು ಘನವಾದ್ದು ಗುಲಾಬಿ ತೊಡೆಗಳು ಸುತ್ತುವರಿಯುತ್ತವೆ ಕತ್ತಲಲ್ಲಿ ನೀನು ನನಗೆ ಕೊಡುತ್ತೀಯ ಅಕ್ಷಯ ಹೂದಾನಿಯ ಜೊತೆಗೆ ನಿನ್ನ ತುಟಿಗಳ ಹೂದೋಟವನ್ನ ಆದರೂ ನಾನು ವ್ಯಾಧಿಗ್ರಸ್ತ ಅಳೆಯುತ್ತೇನೆ ಚುಟುಕು ಚುಟುಕಾಗಿ ನನ್ನ ಪರಾಗವನ್ನ ನಿನ್ನ ಕಣ್ಣ ಪರದೆಯ ಮೇಲೆ ಸಣ್ಣ ನಾಡಿಗಳು ಉಬ್ಬಿ ಸ್ಫೋಟಗೊಂಡೀತೆಂದು ಜಾಗೃತವಾಗಿ ಸಾಯುವ ಒಬ್ಬಂಟಿ ನಾನು ವಸಂತಗಳ ಬೆರಳಿಕೆಯಲ್ಲಿ ಮಲಗು ಮಲಗು ನನ್ನ ಮುದ್ದು ಮೃದು ಗರಿಯೇ ನನ್ನ ವೃಕ್ಷಸ್ಥಳವೇ ಸೂರ್ಯನೆಂದು ಕರೆದವಳೆ ಇರುವುದು ಬರೀ ಒಂದು ಕಲ್ಲಷ್ಟೇ ಅಂತರ ದ ಸೆಕೆಂಡ್ ಪೋಮ್ ಇಸ್ ಆಲ್ ದಟ್ಸ್ ಲೆಫ್ಟ್ ಐ ಜಸ್ಟ್ ಲವ್ ದಿಸ್ ಪೋಮ್ ಬಿಟ್ವೀನ್ ದ ಪೇಜ್ ವಿತ್ ದ ಹಾರ್ಟ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ದ ಮೈಂಡ್ ರೆಸ್ಲಿಂಗ್ ಅಪಾನ್ ಇಟ್ and the ear which later will receive those limbs of light as perfect harmony there's a stillness whose volume speaks world's words defiant of measure treasures of the unsayable secrets of the ever be enchantment and the never ending gathering at the lips of the kiss of the poem and the kannada version goes like this kadege ulididdu putagala naduve putagala naduve hridayada mattu manasu putagala naduve hridayada mattu manasina hodedaata aamele keluva kivi kuda aa belaka padagala sariyada samarasya ನಿಶಬ್ದ ಸ್ಥಿರತೆಯ ಶಬ್ದ ಆಡಿದ ಮಾತಲ್ಲಿ ಪದ ಪ್ರಪಂಚದ ಪ್ರತಿಭಟನೆಯ ಮಾಪನ ಆಡಲಾಗದ ಐಶ್ವರ್ಯ ಸದಾ ಹುಟ್ಟುವ ಆಕರ್ಷಣೆಯ ಗುಟ್ಟು ಹಾಗೂ ಎಂದೆಂದೂ ಮುಗಿಯದು ಕವಿತೆಯ ಮುತ್ತು ಹೊತ್ತ ತುಟಿಗಳ ಅಂಚಿನ ಸನಿಹ ಐ ವುಡ್ ಫೈನಲಿ ಫಿನಿಷ್ ದಿಸ್ ಬೈ ರೀಡಿಂಗ್ a tiny little poem which i wrote for one of the resistance uh, political resistance movement here in india i am just reading the translation in english knock on the door knock on the door from outside from inside door that opens from this side is pushed forcefully from that side darkness barges in drags the lights on the street anarchy turmoil and utter chaos when darkness spreads the inside out those that sleep under their cozy concealed blankets never see the red of the blood seeping under their dark sheets knocks not so frequent are now heard often from all the sides i dedicate this poem to wonderful jack thank you very much thank you for having thank me you very much. thanks a lot Samka. thank you this was wonderful and your canada language is incredible it's a singing it's a complete singing thank um, you Andy. now we go to No. Gloria, um, she is also a Raksa collaborator from Boston. She is the editor of Savina Barba Press and had just closed down her wonderful bookshop. That's so sorry. And, but as a poet, she just um, uh, published her um, uh, poetry collection called Ash. which wins one award after the other it's incredible it's a wonderful poetry book so please gloria um read us what you want to read for jack all right thank you um when i read this poem by jack i just had to um read it for you today and it's called when when i saw in the council chambers of the big city the mouths of the council members opening and coming down on the fat sandwiches 
that been delivered to their places, coming down and chewing and leaning over, talking with half-stuffed mouths or heads thrown back, laughing, their bellies shortling, and all the while, one after another, homeless person stood not far from them, but far enough from them. Before a microphone, requesting help for their most basic human wounds, protesting against a syndrome without alternatives, except for Skid Row hotels or a concentration camp in the downtown desert. When I saw the indifference of this system physically manifested by those pigs of local government, I thought it can't be quick enough that they'd led to the sty they belong in, it can't be quick enough that they're forcibly removed from the people's chambers and replaced by human animals who at least can smell the heartbreak and the enduring dignity of the American people. Those pigs are worse than the rottenest blue pork at the bottom of the garbage can, Los Angeles. Hungry men and women should never have to be subject to their poisonous, filthy mold. Thank you. Wonderful poem. And thank you for reading this. Very, very nice. Great. So now um, we come to Colombia again. Luz Mi Luzella Mejia. Um, she lives in the USA and she's also the founder and editor of Tesselata book. She is a creator of the poetry site Ablucionistas and part of the international poetic group Poetas Sin Fronteras, which is collaborating with the Rucksack project. Okay, Luz, please. Thank you, Angie, very much. Thank you for, for putting this together and, and for inviting me. Inviting me. Uh, I feel really happy to be part of this celebration for Jack. I didn't meet him personally, but I read his poems and uh, I think it, you know, when you read somebody's poems, you know that this is their soul. Uh, his words really speak truth to me. So I really, I really like him. I'm gonna read a poem uh, written by uh, Jack and then I'm gonna wrote a poem that I wrote uh, inspired by his words. His poems is Menorah. The basin of winter water from the stream in which I throw my face the morning after. The candle is burning. Neither mystic democracy to fall back on, nor an ideology of secularity. Just the bed, sacred. Candle is still burning. No temple to regain, but the overthrow of all this painful indifference that lives in the heart of things we become. The candle goes on burning. Fed up with chips to play, to eat, to read, whole books on off a screen. The candle burns on. A gorilla in the frigid jungle of nothing. Darkness, but for the burning candle. Is this history, prehistory, post-history? I look out the window, Snow is on the branches of a poem I wrote 30 years ago. Now, tomorrow, the candle glow will be turning blue. All oh, days of singing, dancing, and the dreadlings of glee. Why do you remind me of me? I'm turning into stone again, the candles dimming. A child is licking the melt. The candle is dark. His eyes blaze in the dark all winter. And the poem that I wrote uh, is, the candle is still burning. Because the candle is the light that's left when the big lamps fail to illuminate. Out of the lime, limelight where the circle of loyalty persists. Out of mainstream was the path with relief casting shadows and shine. Candles in hands to find the road and see the real faces of the wanderers. Out of the stone circles with caryatids forever standing up to nothing. Far from the poems written with gold, 
and the books printed in bills. In love, we trust. Outside the painful indifference of the hearts of the cold things we become. Out of the cute brick walkways around Greek letters. Just jumping and rolling in keep of the grass fields. You will be the candle and the dandelion that cannot be uprooted. Thank you. Thank you very much, Luz, for this wonderful poem that you dedicated to Jack. Really nice. Now we go again to India. To the operator of Raksak, and he lives in New Delhi. He is a multilingual poet, translator, literary critic, a very creative person. He is also a singer and musician and founder and editor-in-chief of Advaitam Speaks Literary Journal. Please, Sebastian, the word uh, to you. Thank you so much, NT. Uh, thank you, Team Raksek and World Poetry Movement. And my heartfelt greetings to all the wonderful poets here. And I really enjoyed all the readings uh, happening till now. So I have not personally met Jack till now or, you know, I have not met ever actually, but uh, uh, my poem is a tribute to uh, his works and his philosophy and the overall person he was. So I'm going to read my poem now. Uh, the poem is Silhouettes of Samskara. Am I clearly audible to all? Yes, you are clearly audible, it's perfect. Okay, 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 thank you. Uh, Silhouettes of Samskara. What is samskara if shadows do not dance? The sunness of a sun is the sun. The shadow is more dance than its sun. What is murder without dharma? When a tradition is tired enough and still, to kill is self-realization, to live is forgetting. The dance of samskaras is the dance. Who cares for the beauty of evenings if the sky is not a ghost? Ghosts are subaltern beings pushed to the margins of history. The rest are but coffins of smiles. What is beauty without brutality? Beauty lies in less. The lessness of less shapes into a dream long forbidden, vocal, brutal, and fresh. What is love if it is blind? Being is seen. To see through the skin of flesh is to love. The rest but shrapnel minima. Burden can be antimatter, gravity and outward push. The day when poetry reclaims the streets and empathy, the art of poetry, Lush layers of silence will scream together loud, pierce the vocal gods of night. A mighty jazz of people, centrifugal and just, will rise again from history's fertile dust. What is samskara if shadows do not dance? The sunness of a sun is the sun. The shadow is more dance than its sun. Thank you. Thank you very much. Very, very nice and very nice Welcome. reciting, Divasis. Welcome. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. My pleasure. I'm to Germany, to Gino Leineweber, part of the German Pen Center, German speaking authors abroad. Um, I, uh, in fact, he is, was also for 12 years, he led the Hamburg Authors Association. Association and now he's the honorary chairman and uh, um, he, Gino, the word to you. Yes, <clears throat> thank you very much, Antje. I am very happy to be here and uh, to be with 
uh, every one of you. And uh, I <clears throat> will start with my remarks about Jack Hirschman. Jack Hirschman and I have a lot in common. There is our connection to Dadaism and Surrealism, as well as our love for Italy. I am a biographer of Ernest Hemingway, actually the young Ernest Hemingway and his beginning of writing. As such, I find it very interesting that Jack, as a young man, asked Ernest Hemingway for advice. That was very brave and clever, since Hemingway was an outstanding writer and one of the most knowledgeable on literary theories. It was a nice remark from the acclaimed writer to a young poet to tell him, you write better than I did when I was 19. I'm not sure it was right. But it was very encouraging, though. I'm now reading the poem, The Letter Erkan, by Jack Hirschman, dedicated to the Turkish poem poet <clears throat> Ilhan Sami Komak. The letter is you, Karo Ilhan, and that's why you will be released from that unwell well of a prison that you have already ascended and liberated yourself from. Because to keep a free and freed man behind bars is an insult that not even the Turkish government can bear without itself recalling that it stepped upon Nazim Hikmet's face for 21 years with its boot heel mark of a spastica. And whether Kurdistan or not, your face wears the poems of what liberty is about. And with all 26 letters of America's alphabet for the 26 years that your hand has written image after image and rung by rung, Karo Ilhan Sami, until this poem after poem, you climbed free from that sick well, missing only the cheek of Suna, your sister, or the light body of a cat to stroke, or a sunflower to caress, or the hand of a woman to put your own in the palm of, and then begin to seductively finger with a silence after so many years of sounds of words writ by oneself. I tell you what I am sure you already know, that the poem, which is the song of being itself, you early on shows as a key to your emancipation by way of the letter of your breath and words, that even standing still, you rose up, rung by poem until, yes, you are there in that well. Only you are not, you are here in the world of our embrace, so that even if a hundred prisons ganged up to keep you forever, you'll always be free, whether living or dead, unimprisonable. 
O Ilhan Sami Komek. Present. Thank you. Thank you very much, Gino. So I take the occasion because uh, Ilham Sami Komak is a um, Kurdish writer and poet who is in prison. He was in prison when he was 18 and a student. With, uh, he was accused to be part of the Ikapakapa, the Kurdish organization. And he still is in prison and more than 20 years have passed. So he is one of the uh, poets that is the longest time in prison ever. And next week, uh, Gino and I and other people from Letters with Wings and Erkut Tokman from Turkey, we are going to organize an event for writers in prison. And we will dedicate the whole event to Ilham Sami Komak because we think it's very, very important that this great poet, he is a very good poet. He wrote eight poetry collections in prison. And um, if you read them, I started crying because they are so strong. So please, next week, keep connected with us. This is a very important event. Thank you, Gino. Great uh, thank that you, <laughs> Yes. Yeah. We go now back to India because this time we really have lots of Indian guests and I'm proud of this. We have Pankuri Sinhar. She is a bilingual young poet, story writer, and she has lived for 14 years in North America. Her writing is dominated by scenes of exile and immigration, gender equality and environmental concerns. She founded the group Poets Without Borders. Pankuri, we will listen to your composed poem for Jack. Thank you so much, Ante. It's a pleasure and honor to be here with all of you esteemed poets, uh, people who have met Jack Hirschman. That's really very big. Um, I have attempted to write a poem here uh, for him. Let's see. And uh, I would also like to translate maybe a couple. And indeed, I have to say he's a great poet. Um, maybe if I have time, I would like to read a poem by him. Uh, my poem for him is called Poetry for All. It's inspired by his cry, everyone's a poet, no exceptions. A generous educating heart who not only believed in poetry for all, like bread and wine, or better still, like bread and cheese, blue sky and green trees. But that all could write, sing to tune, wear and eat poetry, nourishing their soul, sense of beauty, inner delight. What a vision to popularize the beleaguered arts, along with the faith we are all born happy not just innocent. And life's turmoils, scratches of war, only succeed in burying it deep, deep inside us. We all have crevices, caverns, and valleys inside of our hearts, where we can hide all things precious, like happiness and joy innate. Let it hibernate to find it intact allow to rebloom, make a garden to greet us again once we are back from the long march to end all wars, claim peace forever and ever, never to be unsettled. Andy, do I have a minute and I would like to read this poem? Uh, yes. About yes, for sure. Go ahead. I think this one's also called All That's Left. And I have a question actually for uh, Mamta Ma'am. The one that she read, I think, isn't that called uh, Poets 11 Poem or something like that? I just, yes, this you're right. Okay, thanks anyway. So all that's left in the world, whether in Cuba, Venezuela, Bolivia, as well as in China, Japan, the United States, Europe, the Middle East, Africa, all of them cannot, despite their resistance, despite their refusal, stop this march of death because they, 
as well as all that's right in the world, despite their refusal, despite their resistance, already are counted among those in this last parade. Communists and progressives, Nazis, fascists and reactionaries, Zionists and anarchists of every stripe, none are excluded, none can evade the march. This one's not coming with hammer and sickles or swastikas or flags of any land. This one's the march all was surrendered to, but when comes the unanimous cry? When will it really happen if death is peace? When can I truly die? You will never know and yet you do because you may already have and this life is your way of paying homage to the power that loves you enough to have taken your life away and left you with a taste of immortality on your lips. Nothing mystical, no Christ, Allah, Jahwa or Buddha in the wings, even lying on your back, you're marching. This is not a cynical or pessimist or nihilist poem. Join death to your life and you will live as if there were no drug to march to. There is no march at all. You're done. All will be well for all. Thank you very much, Panpuri. Very, very nice. Very nice. Your poem and also the, the one you chose. Thank, thank you. Now, Don Creek. Technical master. Uh, he is also a biomedical researcher whose focus is uh, electric activity within the brain. He is the author of different hybrid collections, an interesting combination between poetry, prose, and photography. So please, uh, Don, we are waiting for your poem for Jack. Thank you very much. Thank you everyone for being here and for reading and listening. To be more than. We're at war with art as privilege. Jack Hirschman, the painting. We long for return to be in person reading, pub and bookshop, hugs and wine, gasps and knowing nods, that rare happening, lustrous poets, winners of those great awards you've never heard of, travel and honoraria, peerage we all want, the excitement for each other, the cultured admiration for each exquisite phrase left no doubt the extraordinary to which we were privileged. Yet so many explained what this is about, closed with a dying leaf, an easy sigh, or held us with narrative, yet came off the rails to a bafflement. The greatest performed with perfect craft, as if pure water were forced through his pen leaving nothing palpable on the page. Craft and music, the quick turn, the lightning bolt, and human contact. But for the COVID, we would never have met. But for Zoom, may never again. I must have something to say and the need to say it. Yet what I write is wasted if the listener can't buy a ticket or must be inside my head to understand or must labor with his best thinking and be a genius at that. What meeting place is there for art when all the world is shut out? Thank you, Don. Thank you very much. This was dedicated to Jack. And, and uh, are you going to read that's all, that's all I have. Good. 
Okay, then we make a jump to Greece. We go to Xanti Hondru Hill. She is a new collaborator of our RACTEC project. She studied German literature and linguistics at the University of Stuttgart and journalism. She has worked as a multilingual teacher, journalist, public relations manager. Now she lives in Greece, but she has lived all over the places. She is the organizer of many poetry events like Poetry on Rails for the municipality of Imantia, a Facebook page called Poetry and Arts. And she's going to set up the rucksack block. So we are really proud and we are happy that this will happen. So Xanti, please read us your poem or the poem from Jack. Good evening to everyone. I have uh, two poems. One is um, one I wrote uh, by being inspired by Jack Hirschman and one which I found from him, which um, I just fell in love with that. So my poem is called The Running Poem uh, and his poem is Path. So I will read mine first. The Running Poem. The mobility, head of elegance, speed of success, victories, was lost. The mobility I lost held back, back what was most loved as a kid, the overtaking of the others, cooperating with the wind, on the long stretch to the finishing line of winners, life's delusions to teenagers, to put it eloquently, that it would give them a home run. That's mine. And the poem which I fell in love with by Jack is called Path. And you need to hold on to your chairs. Path by Jack Hirschman. Go to your broken heart. If you don't have one, get one. To get one, be sincere. Learn sincerity of intent by letting life enter because you're helpless, really, to do otherwise. Even as you try escaping, let it take you and tear you open like a letter sent, like a sentence inside. You've waited for all your life through you've commit, though you've committed nothing. Let it send you up. Let it break you hard. Broken. Hurriedness is the beginning of a real reception. The ear of humility hears beyond the gates. See the gates opening. Feel your hands going akimbo on your hips, your mouth opening like a womb, giving birth to your voice for the first time. Go singing, whirling into the glory of being ecstatically simple. Write a poem. Thank you. <laughs> wonderful. Yeah, this is great. A wonderful invitation to all of us. So strong. Thank you for George, are you there? Uh, George uh, is from New York and a great promoter of poetry. He just finished a, an important anthology where he collected all the poets from New York. More than 177 poets were living in New York and who are related to the city. So he is also a great uh, grassroots 
social poet. Please, George. Thank you. Good to see everybody. We're just now having thunderstorm and tornado warnings here. So hopefully I'll get this tornado of a poem for a tornado of a poet out before uh, it strikes. I've known the work of Jack Hirschman for many years. This book of his, Scintilla, from 1971, was my first introduction to him. This was before he had much of a political profile. And it was actually looking at the Kabbalah and doing what the beat poets during that time called a Bob Kabbalah. It's a very interesting work of his. Over the years, I've had many occasions where our, our paths crossed. And I'm delighted to be able to read this poem, which I wrote for Jack uh, in late August of this year. And I entitled it uh, for Carol, Carol Jack, because he used to sign his emails or notes to me, Carl Jack. Lingering somewhere between heaven and earth this day, earth you adored and the people closest to it. Like the Pacific salt mist among the enormous sequoias adores the earth. Like deep ocean bank of fog spilling over every ridge, picking up scent of sagebrush and eucalyptus grove, as it goes, pours into hidden valleys, overwhelms the presidium, rises up from the embrace of Coatlicu and the sweet cunnilingus of material existence, but lingers. You can't quit her, can you, Jack? Old friend of the people, camarado of skid row corners and goofy kids in the Bronx, and dreamers dreaming left curves out of this crazy dungeon called capitalism, and outriders and mutineers in the musty book stacks of San Francisco, their brains on fire. Therefore, while you are still within hearing in the cool exhaustion of your last breath, sounding out your last arcane and the fault lines of California in slumber and the hill fires burning all around you, I call to your spirit as it rises, your spirit which yet lingers with love for the world, because it is the world, as much as it lingers for the heaven that is in it. You who gathered up the quarrelsome people of the world and divided them up into 12 equal tribes, you from a corner table at Specs. You with your face like flames on the cover of El Tecolote, calling out the masses. You in your all night writing chamber. You who sent your poems out into the world like well-trained children, like the flocks you dreamed you could bring into existence and see the cloud banks over Mount Tamalpais with, raised in the methadone fields of Potrero Hill or take up arms like the bones of the dead against the modern truths and wield them like swords and not back down or praise Shekinah, the divine feminine presence that wakes whenever a single burning soul burns in the dark, bends in the handwritten candlelight and gives birth to a poem. Carol Jack, you who was at the hope, original heart of the Black Aleph and walked all night long at the head of the Crypto Kabbalah parade through the cell blocks of America, through the sweatshops in barrios and favelas, worshiping tornado women and from a birth on the transcontinental train, imagining what righteous havoc she could wreak. Kid Dybbuk with malice towards none, anarchist in the tide, you who handed out free poems to the masses from Mission Street to the wind-blown tents and hollow cheeks of the homeless in the tenderloin. Poems like manifestos or rifles or loaves of bread. Poems like holy needles full of recovery dope. You who thumbed your nose at Gavin Newsom and Newsom liked it. 
they made you poet laureate of San Francisco anyway. You who burned down the streets of Nixon's America and never stopped burning and burning, who translated Joseph Stalin into American, who translated Roque Dalton into American, who translated the real black Jesus into American and spoke the Bacabala and taught Jim Morrison how to rage and have visions on stage. You who love the unhoused and the imperfect and the unlovable beyond reason and never ran out of love and the workers in human cages and all who are prisoners or the one of the one big cage. Foo, foo, Carol Jack. There is a disturbance in the ports as you rise this day to revolutionary heaven, a disturbance in the force. One with the old Italian who walks with two wooden sticks for canes. One with the Venceramos Brigade, sensing the pot of rage in the slums of Peru. Wielding a stone sickle among the Nahuatl harvesting maize. One with the Aztec eagle warrior with your stubborn jaw, your obsidian eye, consecrated to perpetual class war. One with the Black Panther, the ever emerging new class of him, impoverished and homeless people, and the front line is everywhere, Jack, everywhere, Jack, and you are not gone. You are manning the barricades, and the front line is everywhere, and you are with us, leaning against a publishing house in Sacramento, waiting for the number one to take you over the hill, tossing leaflets and flowers and revolutionary translations to the beloved people. And Jack, you're outside the ca Cafe Trieste, cradling the big blue body of dancing Dave, uh, all of 35 years forever and beautiful and beautiful and gone, whispering arcanes into his holy head and his dead ear as if it is a megaphone uh, that can yet amplify the sad uh, prophetic voice of revolutionary poetry for all the world uh, to hear. Or Jack Hershey. Wow, this was a NATO poem. Thank you, Wallace. This was really great, George. So uh, while we are waiting for Indra to connect, I will read my homage to Jack Hirschman. Um, hey, Jack, what are you doing in my sleeping bag? Did you just come back from a rally? There are people you never met, but still they seem familiar to you. This poem is not wide enough to hold your spill over to me or my spill over from you or the overflow of all the poets, the sisterhood in art. Whatever we do, if we stop writing, we will start painting. If we stop painting, we will make music. If we stop singing, we will cook and laugh relentlessly. Still not forget our broken hearts, our broken world, our strongest weapon, imagination. If we only breathe and laugh, we enter into the zone of simple. If you know how to die, you will never die. That's a miracle of art. Wunderbar, wunderbar. Thank you. Anmesh Mohikta. Anmesh, are you there? Anmesh? Yeah, I'm there. I'm there. Am I audible? Yeah. Yes. Would you please read a poem for Jack? Uh, sure. I'm reading a short uh, poem from Jack Hirschman, and then I will read a shorter one from me. Okay. <clears throat> Here we go. It's called uh, Happiness by uh, Jack Hirschman. There is a happiness, a joy in one soul that has been buried alive in everyone and forgotten. It isn't your barroom joke or tender 
intimate humor or affections of friendliness on or big bright pun they are the surviving survivors of what happened when happiness was buried alive when it no longer looked out of today's eyes and doesn't even manifest when one of us dies we just walk away from everything alone with what is left of us going on being human beings without being human without that happiness without that ha happiness and the next one is the shorter one from me risking the frisking took his talent to the green channel at the airport of dreams valiant brave men with limited talent own the airport own the dreams dormant talent at the airport slept in the flight of dreams brave men without talent paid the salaries of talent talent was happy to be confined in the coffins of dreams salaries grew dreams retracted focused on the never ending tomorrow distracted losing the ever ending today your choice your voice your burden your life thank you thanks a lot uh thank you yeah good oh, evening i'm sorry can I hear you? Ah, there you are great okay would you like to read where are you uh, where are you now which place are you in kenya uh, i'm in lagos in nigeria lagos lagos in nigeria, nigeria. okay Great. Yeah, Africa. So, would you like to read the poem? Yes. Please, yeah. Please read uh, yes, the poem I'm for Jack. Yes, I'm something. Great. All right. Good evening, everybody. The bat yesterday. I choose to call you a running water. You lived like the tree close to my heart. I choose to remember you because you did patter on many dehydrated hearts in art. I choose you, human. You are a bird who lived more than male men without words. I choose to say, rest in our words, my dear bird. Thank you. Thank you very much, Chika. That's nice to have your voice from Nigeria. It's wonderful, this meeting, because we really made a trip around the world. So I think it's time to close down, go to bed for us, <laughs> and have your lunch over in America. So. I thank everybody for being here and I invite you for next week. We have this um, Writers in Prison event. We will send the link to you on Facebook. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much, Don Krieger, for all your help. Thank you very much to all the poets. I think we can stop. Thank you. Thank you for everything. Thank you so much. Very Thank nice. You. Thank you. Muchas gracias. Thank you.